Welcome to the latest installment of a series that we like to call That Leslie Sound. In this series, we're going to attempt to cover every Leslie pedal on the used in the new market. If you want to know more about what pedals are in the series, click on the card above to watch the series opener. And if you want to know what that Leslie sound is, click on the card that will take you to a YouTube playlist that you'll hear many famous songs that use that Leslie sound. Welcome to the series. <laughs> Today, that Leslie sound is being brought to you by the Strymon Lex, and the beard is going to show you what it sounds like. Strymon Lex in stereo. So yeah. if you weren't using headphones, maybe go back and check that out because it sounds really cool with the stereo. Um, this was, I think, my first Leslie pedal. Um, he went big right out of the gate. <laughs> right, and I, I mean, I really hemmed and hauled. Like, we tried to, uh, I was between this and the Pigtronics, uh, Rotos, R Rototron, which we have. There'll be an episode coming up of that. Uh, subscribe to catch that. Um, and I just wasn't sure at the time which one I, I was a huge fan of Roto or Univibe yeah and I wanted to have something more Leslie-ish and so this is actually one of those pedals I bought brand new which a lot of times we'll buy used and stuff like that uh, actually went to uh, we'll just throw a shout out to Tone Taylors and Lidditz uh, Rock Lidditz in Lancaster which awesome place Tone Taylors is cool where they're, where they're building is cool, the whole rock lit it's thing. If you've never heard of that, just do a quick Google search yeah. on it. It's some neat stuff. But I went down there, and they were kind enough to order it and have it shipped to me. Um, and those guys carry a lot of... Uh, are we getting in the weeds? We went through that We went through that period of time where like all the mom-and-pop shops shut down because the big store brands came in. Right. And you can only see these things in forums and online. Right. They came in and opened a shop with the goal of bringing all those pedals. Yeah, they broke the mold for right. sure. Yeah, so I mean, it's almost like walking into a big box store from the perspective of the selection. Yeah, but it's not a big box store; it's a private right. owned. Tons of pedals, tons of amps, tons of guitars. Good content online too. Not that we're pushing you to somewhere else, but follow them on social media. Yeah, yeah good stuff. Cool, cool guys. So anyway, first Leslie pedal, uh, and I really, really, really like this pedal. And so we were having the conversation, you know, I think you tell the story, right? We were having the conversation earlier. We have gotten in so many Leslie pedals for this. We know there's some that we're keeping, um, which makes it maybe that this is one I'm going to have to get rid of. And I'm really struggling with it because it was kind of the first one and it sounds really, really good. Now we plugged in it. I haven't used it for a while. We plugged in it. We're sitting here. I'm going, oh man, I don't know. I don't know. Last time we did something like this, I plugged in a, a chorus pedal that I think I was getting rid of. And instead of getting rid of it, I bought two more right. pedals in the line. So maybe the, maybe your prison worship board will finally be complete with two huge Strymons and the lens. No, no. no not so much. Not going there. It's a great um, pedal. Uh, it's amazing, like, first foray into Rotary for you. So why don't we just play it? Right. So we, you heard it in stereo. Our Leslie riff that we always use in mono. And we will jump between fast and slow once or twice. Let them hear it. And then we'll go through the knobs. Supro uh, Hampton through a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, as per usual. Uh, I won't give you the reference tone because we already have the pedal on. <laughs> oh, I can do that. I can. <laughs> just some, uh, just some <laughs> reverb in the amp on uh, the neck pickup. Right, I'll let you play through it once. And okay. I'll
So we've talked about pedals that have a lot of features. We've had some other pedals on that have a lot of features. We did a video, I don't know whether it will be out before this one or not, on the uh, Korg Tone Works, the G4. Lots of features. Mm -hmm. This about four times the size. About four times the size. <laughs> and this has, I think, all those features. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, so if you look at the pedal, it looks pretty basic. It, it, it breaks my three knob rule by one knob, but it's okay. So what we have is... A fast slow switch and a bypass switch and the fast slow switch I always forget to mention this so we'll mention it if you hit and hold that it becomes a break and it will break it, it will slow it down to stop and when you let go it will go back to the speed so if we turn that on fast and you just hit like a big Yeah. We'll go back up. Yeah. So a nice feature if you don't want to switch to slow, have it slow down, and then if you just... You have a little more control it, over right. how just long the difference is. Step on it and hold it. Um, we have the fast rotor speed knob. So this is going to be how fast your fast setting is. And then if you hold both buttons down you get to a secondary function. And so the secondary function of the fast rotor speed is the slow rotor speed. So just by simply holding those both down and then turning that, we can adjust the slow. At the top, we have the mic distance. So in one position, it's going to be really close to the amp, and one position is going to be far away. I say it like that because until we turn it, I'm not really sure. I don't remember. <laughs> the horn level. So this is bringing up how much of the horn you hear. And the preamp drive. The uh, mic distance also acts, the secondary feature of that is whether you're miking the front of the cabinet through the slats right. or you're miking the back of the cabinet with the back off. Stock positions the back of the cabinet with the back off. We'll show you that in a second. Uh, the horn level is your ramp, right? If I remember correctly. So you can change how fast it ramps. And then the secondary feature on the drive is just like the volume boost. So you can like actually plus or minus 12 o'clock is unity and you can go plus or minus that. A lot of times your Leslie pedals, tremolo pedals, they have, because of the nature of what they're doing, they have a perceived volume loss and some people don't like that so you can give it a little kick so when you kick yeah. it on it gives a little kick what do you want to do first let's do the horn in the cabinet okay so i'm going to take that the whole way to the left we'll go left middle right and then we'll talk about it okay. <laughs> So all the way to the left, close mic Right. All the way to the right, we're pulling the mic away. And you mm -hmm. can tell that because you can hear more of the Doppler effect, more right. of the... The throb. Oh, the throb. Yeah. All right. So, and then the other thing that we can <coughs> yeah. do is factory setting on that is the back of the amp open, back of the Leslie open. 
if I hold these two and go the whole way to the left, now we're miking the front. So I don't know if we can flip that on the, the fly. We can try. Why don't you play like that same thing, and mm -hmm. then I'll try and flip it to the other. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty good. Pretty smooth. I like the back, I think. Yeah, I, I think I do too. It's a little warmer. It's a little more open. Because <laughs> it's not coming through little vents. Yeah. Right. And so one thing to notice, because I always wonder this when I see guys do these things, the, the secondary function stuff. When I did that, so I held both down, I went all the way to the right. I didn't, and I let go. It doesn't change where the horn was. It's still thinking it's where it was before I pushed the two buttons. Now, the second I turn it, then it changes it. And I did turn it back part way through, but I didn't need to turn it back. Hmm. But I wanted people to be able to see where it was. Not, You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, Even though it was there, it would have looked like it wasn't. That's why I rolled it back. <laughs> gotcha. Um, ramp speed. We could do ramp speed really quick. So this would be the slowest ramp speed. <laughs> Sounds like there's a tube or something rattling because it was rattling with the. Hmm. I hope that's not in the mic. If it is, we apologize. <laughs> That's like almost instant. Right. I'm just going to put it back kind of in the middle mm -hmm. for what we're doing. Oh, uh, what else is there? So slow and fast. So let's do. This would be the slowest fast. I'll walk through the different speeds of fast real quick. <laughs> So when you turn that all the way on, so I went to the slow setting, mm -hmm. hold both buttons, run secondary function mm -hmm. slow, all the way to the left is basically stop. So let's not go quite that slow. <laughs> right. It'll take forever to get there for one. It might still That's be still super slow. Yeah. There, it's starting to throb there. So this is kind of like the slowest before mm -hmm. you break. That's what. This would be the fastest slow. <laughs> That's actually pretty nice. I like it. Mm -hmm. I on this pedal, I think that's about where I always had it. Was kind of the fastest slow because it's still going, but not really. <laughs> so what did we not do? We did the ramp. We did the thing. We did the cabinet. Yep. The only thing we haven't done is drive. Right. Which I think it's going to be you at the end, or we just want to. do Well, we can run through the drive, okay. and then I'll do. All right. Uh, so we've had the, we've had the drive on all the so let's start with the drive all the way off. Thank you. 
Yeah, that is good. So we've talked some sometimes they're not as to mm-hmm. us not as usable, yeah, not our favorite. But, but again, this this pedal has a drive I think that's really nice. And, and I think some people are going for different things. Yeah, I think I think some of the ones we expect it to sound like an overdrive or 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 a fuzz like, but it's not. And, and even with that, there's still some that don't quite get that warmth and that roundness. Like, this is really nice. It, it kind of gives you that searing organ sound. That's the way I like to describe it. Some of the other ones, are just were kind of harsh. This one, this one's warm. I like it. And I wonder if maybe the other ones are closer to the drive on a Leslie. Right. And this is closer to the overdrive that we like. <laughs> maybe. It, it, that's, I mean, it could be it, that for us. Right. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. But... This Triman Lex, this is, I, I think, an option that you can't go wrong with. Right. Anything um, Strymon for, for sure, but this is really, really nice. Right. In one of the smaller Strymon footprints. And so, I mean, downside, maybe there is one, is you, you get into cost, though. Mm. Right? So, because um, people keep asking us, I think we'll do some kind of roundup show at the end, but people right. keep asking us, like, where would you go? Like... It comes down to feet. In some regards, it comes down to features. So they have the features you want. You get things like the Fender that have the really nice sensitivity feature. Um, this has all the features. Do right. you need all those features? If you do, that's a really good option. But it's also an expensive. I mean, it's an expensive pedal. It's driving. It's an interesting question. I don't want to divert too much, but we interviewed Brian Wampler, and it was kind of like people asking him, "Well, what pedals should I use?" And his first questions are like, "Well, what guitar do you use? What amp do you play through now? What pedals do you currently use, and what style do you play?" Right. So. You know, we can't maybe inter, inter, interact at all of those levels when those questions are asked. And then he's also quick to say, that's just my opinion. So we try to be honest about what's our opinion. And a lot of times our opinions are the same. A lot of times they're a little different because we're different mm-hmm. players. But again, maybe the cost would be the only downside for this. Um, but it Right. I mean, if you're looking for something. Right. If it's not an effect you're going to use a lot and you don't want to invest that kind of money in right. it, there are tons of options out there that will get you really close. And you'll see several of them on this channel. <laughs> right. Um, but if this is something that you think you want a really, really good, that's a, that's a really yep. good one. Yep. Uh, so with that, uh, please like and subscribe. We're putting out new content every Wednesday at noon, every Saturday at noon. Uh, Pat always reminds me that we're do- we're doing the premieres of those most days, so we're there. One of us is there. Sometimes it's both of us there. It gets kind of confusing who you're talking to, but um, you know we like. If to you hang like out. what said, it's me. If you don't, it's him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we like to hang out and uh, chat with you while we watch the videos. Uh, so please subscribe, click the notification so you know when those premieres are happening. Um, check out Instagram and Facebook, and I think with that. I'm PJ on behalf of The Beard reminding you, no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. So yeah, bonus, we have the expression pedal. One of the really nice things about the expression pedal is we've been doing the whole show with the expression pedal plugged in, going between fast and slow and break on the pedal. Once I touch the expression pedal, it takes over until I touch the pedal again. So, um, so...
Mm-mm-mm. I'm starting to like it with this. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look for this one on our reverb store. <laughs> I'm just starting to like the expression pedal. Oh, yeah, I mean, right. 